So, ladies and gentlemen, to close our event today, we will hear from the academic who has recently crowned Singapore as the world's smartest city for the third year in a row, telling us the methodology behind his findings. Please welcome, virtually, Bruno Landvin from IMD. Hello, I am Bruno Lanvin, the president of the Smart City Observatory. It is an honor to address this event, even if the pandemic is still strong enough to prevent us from meeting face to face. For the last three years, we, that is the Smart City Observatory under the aegis of IMD, in collaboration with SUTD in Singapore, have been publishing the Smart City Index which ranks some 118 cities from all parts of the world, according to their abilities to be smart and improve the lives of their citizens. In the next 15 minutes or so, I shall try to address three questions. Number one, what is the Smart City Observatory and what is the Smart City Index? Number two, what are the main findings and the trends that we observe globally among smart cities? Number three, why is Singapore number one? So let's start with question number one uh, about the Smart City Observatory and the Smart City Index. The Smart City Observatory was created in 2017 under the aegis of the Institute for Management Development, IMD, in Lausanne, Switzerland. One of its responsibilities is the Smart City Index, which has been published yearly since 2018 as a cooperative endeavor between IMD on one hand and the Singapore University for Technology and Design, SUTD, and more particularly its Lee Kuan Yew Center for Innovative Cities, LKYCIC, on the other hand. There are many smart city indices, so why create another one? Well, the SCI is unique because it relies on a very human-centric definition of a smart city. For us, a smart city is typically a place where people, technology, and innovation meet and attempt to shape a common, desirable future. But there are many ways to be smart. This is why, in addition to its annual index, we have also published a series of case studies. The first collection of such case studies was compiled in the award-winning book entitled 16 Shades of Smart in 2019. The second volume has just been released under a different title, namely Cities in a Time of Global Emergencies. But let me go back to the Smart City Index for a minute and flag a few important elements about its methodology. The index is based on the perceptions of real people. They can be business leaders, city officials, ordinary citizens living in the cities considered. And the data are collected through anonymous surveys. Without getting into too many technicalities, let me stress that the index covers five key areas, health and safety, mobility, environment and culture, opportunities to study and to work, and governance. In each of those five areas, we attempt to measure how structures on one hand and technologies on the other hand respond to the needs and expectations of citizens. So moving to part two, what are the main findings and the trends that we observe globally through SCI? The facts first. Well, in 2021, that is the latest edition of SCI, the top three rankings in the index were Singapore, Zurich, and Oslo. And all three cities illustrate different ways to become a smart city. Most smart cities are found in three regions, North America, Western Europe, and Asia Pacific. 
This year's SCI rankings show how much local perceptions have been affected by the pandemic and the acceleration of digital transformation. They also underline how health-related and climate-related issues are becoming more intertwined in the vision that citizens have of the future of smart cities. Size is not necessarily an advantage for smart cities. As we see from the 2021 rankings, mid-sized cities such as Oslo, Lausanne, Geneva, or Bilbao are performing remarkably well. On the other hand, cities that have been perceived as handling COVID challenges in an efficient and effective way, such as Singapore or Taipei, also rank high in the SCI report. Each region has its own leaders in the Smart City Index, offering possible examples of how smart cities can help improve the value delivered to citizens and become competitive hubs for investment and for talent. New York City is leading in North America, Abu Dhabi in the Middle East, and Moscow in Eastern Europe, for example. While Latin American and African cities largely remain of the lower part of the index rankings, we see successful examples also in these regions. Uh, Buenos Aires or Cairo should be expected to stimulate the efforts of other cities in those regions to become smarter. One of the main messages of the uh, latest edition of the Smart City Report is that faced with unprecedented emergencies, smart cities have proved remarkably innovative. In all parts of the world, the rapid contamination of urban population by various variants of the coronavirus has led city leaders to face new responsibilities. This was particularly visible in countries where central government proved slow or even reluctant to take action because many cities have proved more agile than the respective national governments. Examples multiplied of innovative approaches taken at municipal level to organize the distribution of protective equipment, the use of available medical facilities and vaccination campaigns. In smart cities, the availability of a strong technological culture and good digital infrastructure facilitated such initiatives, in particular through the tracing of citizens' movements and contacts. The pandemic has seen an acceleration of digital and ecological transformation in smart cities. This acceleration is redefining resilience, which is increasingly becoming a local objective. The report also shows that citizens' concerns seem to change as the cities become smarter. For example, the cost of housing tends to be a dominant concern in the top ranking cities, where, whereas lower ranking ones tend to grant a higher degree of priority to solving issues related to health, to safety, to sanitation, and to traffic congestion issues. Last but not least, smart cities are also places where the convergence is rapidly increasing between concerns for health on one hand and concerns for climate change on the other hand. So, coming to the last part, why is Singapore number one? Well, there are many reasons. First, uh, we have to look at the areas in which Singapore scores very high compared to other smart cities around the world. These areas include the following, the quality and availability of medical services, culture and leisure opportunities and services, children's access to education, and job and professional opportunities. These are the four areas in which Singapore clearly transcends the rankings. <coughs> But what makes Singapore different from the other champions? Let's take the example of Zurich in Switzerland and Oslo in Norway. Well, if we just look at the uh, scores on the various pillars of the model, uh, Singapore does better on safety. 
Uh, another aspect is that all three cities rank low on affordable housing, which goes back to a point I made earlier. When you get to the top, this seems to be the main concern around the world for all smart cities considered. And last but not least, all of these three cities, Singapore, Zurich, Oslo, do very well on green spaces. But Singapore's effort somehow are more visible and more technology oriented. I think of uh, vertical and roof gardens, for instance. That gives a special branding to the efforts made by Singapore in becoming a smart city. Singapore is a unique case uh, in more than one way. And that may help us identify uh, the next challenges of Singapore as a smart city. What are these uh, uniqueness elements? Number one, Singapore is both a city and a country, which is not so uh, frequent around the world. Second, uh, Singapore entertains a unique relationship with technology. It is a place where there is a high level of knowledge, a high level of uh, savviness and interest and appetite uh, for technology, especially among younger generations. Singapore is also part of the most dynamic region of the world economy, namely Asia Pacific. And this is not going to change for the years to come. Singapore is also a rare example of a truly diverse society. It is also a leader in openness, openness to trade, openness to investment, openness to talent, to cultures. Uh, these are very important elements that also explain the high level of performance of Singapore in the Smart City Index. So what is ahead? Uh, these areas of excellence I just mentioned actually contribute to raising two questions about the future. Number one, since openness has been a key ingredient in Singapore's success, how easy or how difficult is it going to be to remain an open economy and an open society in the future? We see a number of tensions growing internationally. We see a number of uh, uh, weaknesses in the multilateral trading and investment system. How difficult is it going to be to resist these pressures and remain a small open economy? That's one challenge that may have deep consequences on the future of Singapore as a smart city. A second question is how to manage talent in tomorrow's world of work. A key ingredient in Singapore's success has been the quality of its human success, of its human factors, um, its universities, uh, job opportunities, innovation, attracting talent from all over the world around innovation hubs. The world of work of tomorrow will be characterized with more online interaction, with more virtual teams across borders. Uh, more participation in gig economy, that is people participating in one project without having to be uh, employed by the same organization or business. How is the strategy of Singapore going to be able to adapt to those challenges? These are some of the challenges. I am personally very confident that Singapore will be able to step up to those challenges and adapt its own smart city strategies to, to meeting them. Um, anyway, these are some of the key signals and questions that arose from our work on and around the Smart City Index. I hope that they will be useful for your discussions, and I look forward to hearing more about the outcome of this very important event. Thank you very much for your attention.